welcome to the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. Welcome back to the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. This is the ancillary component of the series. We're going to do the teardown on the famous round head fine tooth ratchets. People love these from all walks of tool life, be they fans of the tool truck brands or Craftsmen or whatever people really really like these and they're they're damn tough One thing that I'm gonna say about these real quick is that uh, During the era that these were produced the early 70s and the ratchets underneath that point have Or do not have <laughs> the serial numbers on them fear not if you can identify what product number you need for the repair kit it's universal for all of them so whether or not it has the serial number on it or not uh, will not change the fact that you can use the half inch for example on the any of the half inches it does not matter let's just go ahead and show you some examples of that so if we grab both the three eighths and this quarter inch here you'll see that we don't have any serial numbers like we do on some of the other crafts and ratchets. It just says forged in the USA and then has some patent numbers on it, which isn't very helpful. <laughs> However, there are those that do. So this is one step later than the ones I just showed you. I know that there are people out there that do type studies on these ratchets where they look for all of the different types because the very very first iterations of the round head fine tooth and the quick release ratchets some of them will just say forged in the USA really big with a double V or a single V single bar V and then it'll say patent pending and that's it so regardless of what is written here whether or not it has a product number or not, the half inch kit on this half inch ratchet, it, it'll work. So you don't need to worry about that at all. So I guess let's go ahead and read the number. We've got for half inch, we've got 44987. And then I actually have two right here. We've got a 3 8 with a serial number on it. And that is 43788. And then we've got quarter inch right here at 43173. As you can see, these were all made in 1971. So these had a pretty long run. We'll talk about that more in the history aspect of the video. But like I said, people love these ratchets. They're damn rugged. And thankfully, they are fairly easy to maintain. So let's go ahead and get these guys to the side. And we'll go ahead and grab our little buffer cloths here so we don't damage the table. So what do we do? Well, you take a look at this. So you've got the top. This is how you select your mode whether you're going left or right but it doesn't seem like it's that apparent as to what you gotta do the snap ring if we zoom in real close is right there you see these two little prongs go ahead and grab our probe every little movement I make is huge here there's one prong and two prongs so you can approach this in a variety of different fashions. I, what I found is easiest for me is you can use a snap ring pliers if you want to. I found using the good old bent nose pliers is the easiest for me, at least on the biggest size. I would strongly suggest you alter your strategy for the smaller sizes because you're not going to be able to get away with that. In that instance, you might want to switch to the snap ring pliers or anything that's got a very low profile that you can clench together but for the half inch as we've done with 
all the other ratchets for demonstrative purposes we're going to use the half inch and this is the route that I use so this snap or this retention ring I should say oop, is high energy so be careful you just simply lift and move we'll go ahead and investigate the ratchet in just a second so let's go ahead and zoom in on this bad boy so you get this big giant assembly these ratchets regardless of what point in time you look from their first offering all the way up until the last time they were offered were more expensive than any of the standard crafts and ratchets that's because these require a lot of machining so let's go ahead and lift off the selector plate oh, having a little bit of difficulty actually it's pretty easy so all it is is a disc with some grooves into it and that's how you actually select which mode you're in whether it's reverse or forward clockwise counterclockwise whatever you want to call it and you can see that this is well lubricated <laughs> So, on these earlier iterations, when you depress the quick release button, there's like a plunger that actually comes out. In later versions, that's not the case. I just have these earlier versions. Don't be alarmed. All of the kits are cross compatible, whether you've got the really, real old one or the newer one. And what you want to do is, if you want to do some extreme maintenance on this, is you're going to want to go ahead, take your pliers, and tease these brackets out, these little bars. There's one, and there's two, and then you can use your hand and simply flick the, the, the paws out. It's really easy. And what you'll see is if we zoom in further, Oh, that's a little bit too much apparently as we've got depressed inside as we have the bearings inside of the bearing or beneath the bearings is a spring that seats all the way through this the quick release so let's for instance take this puppy completely apart we can get the full experience here so we'll go ahead and tease out this bearing come on little buddy where'd you go oh, there we are okay and then this bearing one bearing is usually depressed so what you do is you just apply some gentle force on your spring and then you should be able to plop out that other bearing and then with my straight probe I'm pushing out the spring so let's go ahead and take a look there's the hole as you can see right here we have the space for where that retention clip seats these are all the individual grooves for the thumb wheel and these are where those retention bars just seat there's no no glue or mechanical snap or anything like that. The, the selector plate that sits on top sandwiches those in and then everything is nestled in by this ridge right here that's on the top of the selector plate. So it's a really awesome design. These are super duper rugged. Let's take a look at the Paul real quick. So each each side has three teeth. It's kind of like a aviation wing shape. So you get essentially double the engagement. So you get a six toothed engagement on a 45 tooth ring. Go ahead and zoom in on this. So as you can see, this only fits one way. 
the mechanism. Here's where the sandwich or the retention ring goes in. We have 45 teeth. And you get very, very low arc swing because of the double engagement. We'll learn more about that in the history aspect of the series. We're going to focus on putting this thing back together, tearing it down. And then this lip down here, that's where the selector plate seats to hold it all together. So it's a pretty smart design. And the grandfather of this design has a pretty str pretty strange this this has a pretty strange ancestor. We'll get to that in the history aspect also. I was pretty I'm pretty excited to show you guys that eventually. So how do you put this thing back together? Well, we can just go ahead and take a probe or a stick or whatever's handy for you. Get that spring back in position in general. We can do is grab one of our one of our bearings. Oh, come on, little buddy. We can generally get it in position just to press the spring a little bit. Flip it on over. And as long as you have some reasonable amount of lubricant, it should hold. And what you do. A little tap -a So you can take your select or your pull, and this fits only one way. You want to put it upside down so it goes in with the rounded side up and just generally seat it in position. Take your retention bar, insert gently. There we go. We go to the other side and do the same thing. Oop. So, when these things are dirty, there's a lot to inspect and a lot to clean. These aren't very easy to clean if you've got a highly contaminated one. Thankfully, only one of the six or so of these that I have was in pretty bad shape. So you want to go ahead and just make sure that, let's zoom in again make sure that we have some high fidelity in what we did. You'll know if you did a poor job because they won't stick out evenly from each other. This is how they're supposed to actuate. So everything so far fits well. You'll notice if the things aren't seated appropriately the quick release won't function right either. Take your sandwich plate, selector plate, get it on there. All right, so far so good. We get our retention ring. It's generally seated in position. And then what we're going to do is we're going to lower it in. You want to grab your pliers or whatever your tool of choice for this job is. Give it a little bit of a squeeze. All right, we're in position. Boy, we're having some troubles. There we go. We're not fully, huh? Yeah, we have a little bit of an error there. We're not fully in. So we'll go ahead and get our players back, give us some more of a squeeze. Oh man. <laughs> no, I'm just talking to myself, honey. <laughs> Are you talking to me? Come on. Let's try this again. Alright, everybody's in there okay. All unscripted, people. <laughs> okay.
Whoa. Good thing on my finger there. High energy. I've had these things zip all over the place. Let's zoom out a little bit. Damn. They're so easy to put take apart. They're not so easy to put back together. At least this time. Oh, you know what? There we go. That was my problem. So what we'll do, we'll just do this again for demonstrative purposes. It's been a while since I've taken this apart. Is my problem is, is that the poles are catching on the sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to seat our retention ring in position. There we go. And we'll just go ahead and there we go. You want to kind of twist as you insert. Now the kicker is, is that when you do that, most often times I've had it where my retention clip moves out of position. So we'll use the probe to get it back into position real quick. Come on, little buddy. Again, I'm not an expert. There we go. Get it general, generally in position. There. Nailed it. And you'll know you did it right when she turns. And the, oh, did we, there we go. If for whatever reason there's a problem with engagement, when you go to move the selector, she'll just spin and spin and spin. So go ahead and give her some cranks. Make sure she's turning okay. I think we're good. Right on. <laughs> so we had a little bit of trouble. But I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I mean, I'm sharing my experience with you in regards to pairing, repairing these, sharing the little tips or tricks or nuances that work for me. Hopefully they'll work for you, but overall, we didn't do a bad job. We got her back together again, and you got to see what the internals look like. So these are the fine tooth, or I should say round head fine tooth, crafts and ratchets. Probably the toughest ratchet in the craftsman arsenal from when they were first made to date. The much loved <laughs> round head fine tooth. Thanks for watching guys, I hope this helps.